Welcome to the Rustic Garden. Today is March 11th. This is the second video for the 2016 season on my community plot. I did a whole series last year uh, when I first got the community plot and today is really my first day back. The first video um, was shot in winter, I think November or December, and I just showed you how I set up some of the beds, but today is my first day back. I haven't even got there yet. Um, so I'm going to show you how it looks after, you know, sitting for the winter. I'm going to take care of a lot of the mulching with wood chips. going to start a couple of projects where I'm actually going to grow things in containers with just wood chips and some compost of manure. I'm going to plant broccoli, cabbages, some different things. And I'm just going to show you what the plot looks like and really what are the cool weather crops that you can start planting um, when your ground is no longer frozen. And here in Maryland Zone 7, we're ready to plant. We're still going to get frost but these cool weather crops can take a light frost. So let me get started and I'll show you everything along Here's the way. my community plot. I was able to get in there and check it out and it's doing really, really well. I was excited to see that I don't have to do much to get this ready for my cool weather vegetables and get things growing. We did a lot of weeding, so there's not many weeds there. I set up the raised beds in the back. I can't even remember. It's in the first video, November, December, something like that. Um, with wood chips, one of the things that we have here and what I recommend is see what's available in your area that's inexpensive. At this community uh, plot, all of them, uh, all the plots have access to almost an endless supply of wood chips. And you can see that I use them in the paths, I'm using them as mulch, and now in the raised beds back there I'm using them to actually grow plants in. And I'm going to take it a step further, I'm going to do an experiment. I'm going to take these wood chips, put them into containers like these two. Um, and in there I'm going to mix in some uh, humus and manure. This is, you know, something you can just pick up at most Home Depots or Lowe's. It was on sale for $2.97 a pack and I figured that was a pretty good deal because the wood chips are free. So I'm just going to mix this, maybe one whole bag in with the wood chips that go in there. And the reason I'm doing that is to give the wood chips fertilizer so that when biology, soil life starts breaking down those wood chips, looking for nitrogen, it's going to have it. I'm also going to use process fertilizers in here to feed the plants. Um, peat moss is something I recommend to really use in your garden. Some people don't like to use it because they don't feel it's sustainable. That's okay. If you have access to compost, use compost. I don't have an endless supply of compost. What the peat moss does, it doesn't add much nutritional value to your soil but it really adds organic matter that will retain water and I use that when I'm making my potting mixes and putting them into the containers that you see. Let me take you into the garden and just show you what survived. Comes back all the time. Lavender in there looks like that it made it. Over here was all of my kale plants and the kales um, didn't make it. Also I had a problem with these with a huge white fly infestation. So one thing you want to keep in mind is if you've had insects, pest problems in a specific area, don't replant into it the same crop. So this kale, um, or this bed will not have kale planted back in there because I want to move it. I don't want any eggs or insects to get back onto whatever I plant. Now, a lot of times kale survives. None of this survived. But the guy next to me was digging out his red Russian kale and throwing it away. And you can see that it's sprouting. Kale will grow a second season if your winters are mild enough. And these will be delicious, sweet leaves. I'm going to plant this. But it will also flower. And you can eat the, the, um, the flowers. You can put them into salad uh, and really enjoy it. So you can grow kale for a second season. So I'm going to put this in there and I'll show you how I do that. It's not going to go in this spot. It's going to go in another area. Containers all look good. I'm going to freshen up that container soil over time got more containers. I got these from friends. If you start talking with your friends now, when you're doing landscaping, tell them to keep all the containers for you. These are the beds that I set up. Again, I can't remember, November, December, but I put the time in then. These are going to be ready to plant. I already moved some things into here. This is a Swiss chard. This is probably celery leaf. Back in that corner is lemon balm. And these are the plants that I'm going to plant today and show you how I do with them. These are purchased from Home Depot. These were only $3.98 for nine plants. That's a pretty good deal. 50 cents a plant. Some of these are hybrids um, designed to grow quickly. I said, all right, I'm going to give it a try. I've got red cabbage down there, which I've grown before. It's delicious. Over here is baby broccoli. 
And then I think these are two kinds of cabbages. Oh no, it looks like the the tag fell out, but I'll figure that one out. And this is stonehead cabbage. This is a hybrid. So I'll put a couple of these plants in, get them started, show you how I do that. What I want to say now, again, I'm in Maryland Zone 7, and a lot of you that are coming into spring now, if you get light frost, you can really start putting out your cabbages, your kales, your lettuces, peas. Those are your cool weather crops. They can take a light frost. They love the cold weather. They love the cool weather. They taste much, much sweeter, do much better when the temperatures, you know, stay 75 degrees, so 80 degrees. Bed, I'm over. going to plant the kale that I got from a neighbor. And all I did was really clean it up, cut it back pretty far to the point where the green is still there. I could cut this back a little bit more because this has died out and it's a little bit soft. But I want to leave this area intact. I also have a lot of shoots coming from here. Just clean it up, cut it back. It's going to get planted to about this depth. And all of this will shoot, it will grow, and it's going to have um, flowers for me to eat, it's going to have leaves for me to eat, and then I'll pull it out. The soil beneath the wood chips looks really, really good. I will add in some soil when I plant this plant into there. I want to talk a little bit about the seed starts to give you some tips. A couple of things is you really, these got were a little bit dry, and these are actually um, Brussels sprouts. They were a little bit dry. When you buy the plants, you want to make sure that they're well watered, the plants look green, these look fine. I think they were just drying out just a little bit. But really look for healthy green plants, number one. Take your time, look through them, look for flying insects, look for problems, there's no problems in these. You also wanna flip them over, you see the root system is coming out, that's okay. Um, they're cool weather crops, it's only March 10th. But what you have to keep in mind is, if you buy these two, three weeks from now, uh, a lot of these plants have been growing in here too long and they get root bound, they become problematic, they don't grow like you think they're gonna grow. So if you're gonna do cool weather crops, if you're gonna buy cabbages, Brussels sprouts, broccoli, you really wanna get them into your beds quickly. You don't wanna be buying these three, four, five weeks after um, these have been sitting at your stores. You wanna get them quickly. So in the back, I'm gonna put two Brussels sprout plants. And in front of that, I'm gonna put the two broccoli plants. Brussels sprouts grow larger, so you always wanna put your bigger plants to the back. The sun is behind me, so when the sun is up, the shade, say from the Brussels sprouts, if they were planted right here, don't fall onto the smaller plants. So it's the biggest plants are, are planted away from wherever the sun comes. So behind me is where the sun mostly stays, so the bigger plants always get pushed back to the back of my plot here. I'll put these in the ground. Um, and you know, show you exactly what I'm doing. So I planted these two raised beds, and in here I have the Brussels sprouts in the back, uh, the baby broccoli. The distance is almost two feet. That's about what you want for your cabbages, your kales, your broccoli, your cauliflowers. I tend to plant things closer, and you can really do that in raised beds. These I kept a little bit more distance because I know they get really big. Over here I have the green cabbage, the red cabbage in. That should be about two feet. Um, distance between them. This is much more like maybe 18 inches or something like that. In a raised bed, because you're not stepping into the bed, you're not putting all your pressure, uh, all your weight into the soil, creating pressure that compacts the soil, um, makes it hard for roots to grow through. Raised bed vegetables tend to do a little bit better because they have nice loose soil to grow in and the root systems don't have to compete as much. Now, before I get to the chicken wire, and the snail and slug killer bait, let me just tell you one more tip about selecting your plants. When you go to the store, again, you want to get them at the right time. You don't want these growing in here for three, four weeks and then put them into your garden. They get root bound. I forgot to say, just pop a plant out. Take a look at the roots. This is one of the green cabbages. Nice white roots, healthy, moist all the way through. Not a lot of um, Root circular roots down at the bottom, that means it's not really root bound, lots of space still here. This is a nice healthy plant that's ready to go into your garden. And just pop one out and take a look at it and it should look something like this. When you plant it, you're planting it right to here, soil level right to where my thumb is, and then put it in the ground and let it do its thing. Now, everything should do really, really well if you also take care of the pests that come to your garden. Snails and slugs have haunted my garden garden for years until I started using iron phosphate. It's a great 
organic gardening product for killing snails and slugs. It's not the mass poison, um, indiscriminate poison that you can find in other snail and slug killers. So I don't know if you can see it, but it says iron phosphate. It's only 1% iron phosphate. And basically what happens, these are baited pellets, the slugs eat it, the iron phosphate shuts down. Um, really they're feeding their digestive system and the slug dies. The, the uh, snail and slug bait will get sprinkled around here. It will kill them. It's been doing it for years for me. It really, really makes a difference. I won't end up with massive holes and slugs inside my cabbage on the leaves and stuff like that. One of the gross things with slugs is as your cabbage head is forming, they burrow down into the middle and then, you know, when you harvest it, you cut it open, you find them in there and I just don't want that. Iron phosphate will take care of that. The other thing is rabbits, I think are breaking into here that started happening towards the end of last year. Right along the bottom of my fence, there's gaps. It should stop rabbits, not baby rabbits. So you're gonna have a lot of baby rabbits now come spring. That chicken wire is going to go around the bottom part of my fencing. I'll do that over the next couple of weeks. But I'm going to make uh, sort of little covers to go over this cabbage, um, over the Brussels sprouts, the things that I know the rabbits will come in and shear down. And that's just to protect them. Rabbits are lazy. They don't like to work for their food. They don't like touching things. Um, so I'm going to take care of that. So I'm taking care of the rabbits, taking care of the snail and slugs. These will grow over the next 50 days. They will mature, be ready. They'll come out of the garden when my warm season stuff is going into there. So this is gonna be my container experiment. I'm gonna use a resource that I have available to me, and that's wood chips, to fill up containers. It can get expensive to fill containers. Using free wood chips is going to save me a lot of money. So I'm just taking the wood chips that are delivered here, putting them in containers, and I'm mixing them in a ratio um, that looks something like this. Why do I say it looks something like this? Because this is an experiment. I'm just having fun. You don't need exact measures. The peat moss is going in here to help the root system um, have something to grow into that's fine. It'll also hold moisture. Wood chips are outstanding at holding moisture. I only put in, you know, this much uh, for this much of the uh, fill up for the container. Um, a shovel full worth of peat moss, just a couple handfuls of the humus and manure mixed it all in so that the consistency looks something like this. This is going to definitely hold water. Um, now wood chips, when they break down, they do compete for nitrogen. They need nitrogen. I'm going to use a processed fertilizer to supply nutrients to this. And I am also adding in about every half, uh, let's see, probably one or two handfuls of lime. This is lime back here. I'm going to mix that in. The reason you want to add lime is because you want calcium in your growing medium, especially for tomatoes and peppers, or you're going to end up getting blossom end rot. So what I'm doing is I'm making the container soil. Um, feeding it will be an ongoing experiment if you want to watch and see what I do, see how things grow. I'm going to set this up, fill it to the top, do a couple more containers, and I'm actually going to see if, how well a Brussels sprout grows in here. It's a big plant, it's a heavy feeder. If a Brussels sprout can grow in here, then I'm going to, I really think I'll be able to grow um, most of my plants in here um, that I typically grow in the raised beds. So here's the final setup for this video. The mulch, peat moss, uh, humus, manure are all in the containers. I have Brussels sprouts, red cabbage, um, baby broccoli all in place. I want to show you what I did with the wire. This is a way to keep the rabbits out. You can make a couple different things. You can just pinch it together at the end, put the bamboo stakes in and cover it just like you see. You can make smaller ones if you just have singular or uh, single plants. And over here, if you don't want to kind of make the domes like I did, rabbits are very skittish. So if you lay the chicken wire down like this, if they walked on that, their, paw, their paws, their feet drag into that, their back feet, um, and it really deters them from getting to the cabbages and chewing them down. Um, and this is, again, another experiment. I want to see how well this works. If anything gets chewed down, we know it's not that effective. I know that the domes work perfectly well. But this is essentially video two. Hope you enjoyed it. I hope it gives you some ideas for the garden. Please check out my blog at www.thrustedgarden.blogspot.com and also check out my YouTube videos. Thanks.